Michelle, you deal with a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of <laughs> business people, business owners. And I, I'm i wondering out in your community, because you're not in the e-commerce world specifically, um, right. and maybe you could tell everybody what your niche is before we get started. Yeah. Tell them a little bit about your business. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I am a business coach, a business strategist, as Danny said earlier, and I focus on service-based entrepreneurs, um, and I focus specifically on revenue creation. So how do we make more money in my in our business? That's my specialty. So yeah, yeah and I found Michelle several years ago um, through her teaching of social media marketing. Mm-hmm. And um, that's where I got to know her and and uh, later signed me up. You got this figured out. <laughs> I'm following <laughs> you. Um, so we see a, a lot of chatter out in our communities on Facebook and, and social media. And what do you hear out there that is key, holding people back? It's keeping them from making the money that they want to make. Uh, actually, I think that um, yeah, it's definitely all about the fact that they're not making the money. Uh, businesses, you know, you, you live and die by cash flow. Cash flow. And, yep. uh, you know, cash flow is a byproduct of sales and sales are a byproduct of, con- of conversion. So when we don't understand conversion in our business and what that looks like and, and how to hold the sale and how to ask for the money. And then it gets even bigger, Danny, because, you know, I believe that uh, a lot of entrepreneurs start their businesses because they, you know, maybe they can't stand their boss or they, uh, there's something that they just absolutely love to do or their friends are constantly saying, man, you should start a business doing that. And we go into business the majority of the time, not realizing that we've got to be able to sell. And there's such a stigma out there around that whole conversation that it really is the death of a lot of businesses. And so, yeah, you know, there's a lot of things yeah. you got to know to get, get good at conversion and get good at sales. You know, it's, it's a much deeper problem, but that's definitely the issue. Yeah. And, you know, and I find the same thing I, right now. You can go to my Facebook group and there is a whole thread. And I'm sorry, guys, I'm going to call it whining about <laughs> I haven't had a sale in two days. I haven't had a sale all week. And it's all about there's no sales, no sales. And I find, maybe you find this too, is that people kind of stay stuck in focusing on the no sales correct? instead of what the heck they can do about it. That's right. What did they go do about it? That would, if I was on that thread, Danny, you know me, that would be my question. <laughs> what What are you doing about it, right? <laughs> or, or what are you doing differently? Be, be, correct. I see people just, they're going to keep doing the same things. Right. Right. So in your world, that might mean that they need to um, shift up their listing a little bit or, you know, um, look at how they're putting things out there and who they're getting in front of and who knows about their store. Right. Right. Yeah. I I can't remember where I heard it, but that you can't be a success if you're a secret. That's right. And a lot of these eBay sellers are falling into the secret mode because we are no longer in the days when eBay is driving the traffic. I mean, it used to be the heyday. Oh, everybody went over to eBay and your items all came up. And but, yeah. but then the the geniuses, and I say that with full sarcasm. <laughs> in, I know you, Danny. I know you. <laughs> <laughs> making sure everybody else knows this is in the software development arena of eBay came up with this thing called Cassini Search which is basically an algorithm to try and predict what customers, you know, want to come up and, and, and it's, it's a train wreck. It is a train wreck. So following Facebook's lead, right? uh, Yeah. (laughs) So we have to do it ourselves. We have to be proactive and market and all that good stuff that, that goes with getting the word out about what you sell. Absolutely. Um, so we're, we're not so much different in the, the people that we're talking to out there and helping. But again, it goes back to that you've got to do something and you've got to do something different than you've done before if that's not working. That's correct. You have to have the courage to do it. It's, a lot of times it's all about the courage, right? And the courage. Yes. Um, so that's a, a big focus uh, that w- we deal with. So what advice would you give to people who are struggling in that mode and, and maybe don't know 
what they need to do next. So if we're talking about looking at, um, you know, the conversations around sales and how that might be happening or the conversion in your business and how that might be happening, then um, we want to we want to understand a couple of things. And I know one of the things you talk about a lot is um, is niche. Right. And understanding what your niche is. I think that's extremely important here. Without that understanding, it makes your sales so much more difficult. So I'm a huge believer in knowing your niche, knowing what they're looking for, knowing what they're already spending money on. Right. And how do they have those conversations? What are the words they're using? And for you guys, it's keywords. Right. What are you what are you putting in the titles? What are you putting in the listings that you know your audience is looking for? The trick here is to um, to to be using their language and not your language. Right. And so, Danny, um, you know the things that come off the top of my head would be maybe your audience is looking for antique something, the word antique, and you call it old fashioned. Mm-hmm. Right. You just completely missed the boat. Missed it. Yep. Missed yep. it. And so you got to know who they are so that you can know everything about them. You need to know more about them than they know about them. Right. And the truth of the matter is they're already telling you there's easy ways for you to find out um, all of that information about your market. So when we understand those things and then we, you know, the other part of that is opportunity and whether you are a service based uh, business owner in my community, you know, and you're you're a coach or an author or a VA or whatever that looks like in my community. The opportunity is how many people are you speaking with? How many sales conversations are you holding? For for someone in your community, my guess would be that the opportunity is how many listings are you doing, right? And mm-hmm. and what are you putting out there? And how many opportunities do people see have to see you out there? How many places? Are you putting your your products and your wares? So, and I would love to hear um, more from you, Danny, on expanding that. If you have some other ideas, right there. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the big things, and you touched on this a little bit with with saying it's about courage. Is I see a lot of fear around even starting a Facebook page or a Twitter account. There's fear, and so exactly. people just don't do it. They just don't don't do anything. So, how would you say they can get over some of that fear? Oh my goodness. So I don't know if you get over it. I think that you have to do it anyway. Mm. I will tell you guys, you know, um, Danny knows me very well and has known me for years, but I am an extremely introverted, shy individual. And so normally, you know, I, do I come and do shows like this? Absolutely. And do I stand on stages and speak? Absolutely. But I'm telling you, I'm doing it from a place of fear. You know, the fear is there. The shyness is still there. The, the introvert is still here. Um, however, I know my business isn't going to grow without doing these things. So I do, I'm, I'm a 22nd kind of girl, man. And you ask me, you know, will you be on my show? I'm going to say yes so fast. And the reason I am is because I know if I think about it, I'm going to say no. And so when it, when it came to social media for me personally, as a shy introvert, uh, there was a lot of fear in the beginning around doing that. But I will tell you, that's how I built my business that first year. I started this business a little over five years ago. And the first year I started on social media because I couldn't bear the thought of networking in person. (laughs) So, you know, for me, it was a great place to build community. And once I realized that it's truly only a marketing tool for me, that's how I use it. Um, Yeah, I get to keep, you know, connect with some of my family members and things like that and stay connected. But it's a marketing tool. And so um, I say, you you know, you feel that fear and you do it anyway, just like that great book. (laughs) Yeah. Wasn't it, was it, I think it was Tom Hopkins many, many years ago when I was in direct sales that said, do what it is you fear the most, then you control fear. Absolutely. And me being the control freak that I am, I like having that control. (laughs) (laughs) That is true. I know that about you. (laughs) (laughs) I think that's kind of an entrepreneurial quality is we all want that to be those control freaks. So, but yeah. And you know, it's funny you say that about being, I see, I don't, I don't consider myself an introvert, but there was a time where I actually experienced agoraphobia. I did not want to leave my, my ranch. 
I didn't go to uh, there. eBay used to do these huge conventions called eBay Lives. I never got to one because right. I was too afraid to step out and go and do that. Um, yeah. And it was realizing that I was missing out on so much stuff and everybody's talking about it. And I'm just like, I really want to do that. So it just happened. There was one at, when they changed it to eBay on locations and it was happening in um, San Jose, which I could drive to. Mm-hmm. So that was easy. And my daughter went with me. So I kind of had, you know, a hand holder along and then I realized, oh, my gosh, I am never missing one of these again. I'm not going to lose this opportunity to get out and meet these people. And now, of course, you know, the rest is history. I go everywhere, you know. But Yeah, yeah that's what happens is you flip the switch from one extreme to the other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, my, uh, my story is very similar. You know, I um, after that first year in business, I got a phone call from a lady one day and she said, could you come speak for our luncheon in Houston? Houston's about two hours from my house. I did the 20 seconds of courage and said yes really quickly. And she said, great, didn't you write a book? And I, and I said, yes. And she said, come talk about your book. And I said, well, so listen, did you hear about my second book? And she said, no. I said, yeah, it's a social media book called Take Action, Get Profits, Five Steps to Massive Online Visibility. And she's like, great, come talk about that book. And so I hung up the phone. She's, we sat on a point for two weeks later. I hung up the phone and said, hmm, better write the book. <laughs> so... <laughs> I wrote that book super quick. I couldn't get it printed, but I wrote the book and I came up with this idea. I was going to go speak at the luncheon. I had 20 minutes to speak and first time ever speaking anywhere. I was terrified. Okay. And so (laughs) I came up with a plan to sell a $97 virtual program, an online program. And I was going to give the book as a gift. And it was a downloadable book because I hadn't had time to print it. Right. I sold $2,000 worth of that program in a 20 minute talk. And I remember leaving that room and calling my coach and going, okay, you were right. I can do this. Yeah. You know, yeah. Feel the fear and do it anyway, baby. So I was hooked. So on that, we're going to take a quick commercial break and we come back. Let's talk about your newest book. Absolutely. All right. working for yourself and you have your own business, the only limits there are, are the ones you give yourself. I'm going to miss that, that kind of song when (laughs) the event's over next week. I (laughs) love that. Uh, So that was the uh, promo for the More Fun, Bigger Profits event, which is, oh my gosh, it's next week. Starts next Wednesday. And uh, you will be there, of course. Yes, I will. Yeah, we're very excited. You were there. You were there for the first one. I was. Which is awesome. Yes. (laughs) Um, So we're excited about that and having you back. But let's talk about, because I see it right over your shoulder there. Yeah, Take the Risk or Get a Job. That's the newest book. Yeah, and I have to confess, I have not read it yet. I mean, That's is okay. It, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you've had, a, you, you know, you've had so much time to just sit around and eat bonbons. Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you know. So, yeah, but I'm going to get my autographed version next week. So I hope okay. you're bringing some of those with you. I am. All right. So that's a deal. So tell us what's in the book. Yeah, absolutely. So the book is, um, well, first of all, it is, you know, it's kind of my thing, right? You either start building your business or go get a stinking job because I'm, I don't know about you, Danny, but I'm tired of hearing the whining. So yeah. either do it or, or just give up. And um, I know it's kind of hardcore, but that's really the reality of what's going on out there. And, and I believe that there are three things that uh, keep entrepreneurs broke. They're afraid they're cheap and they're lazy. And so That's what the book's about, (laughs) what it means to be afraid, cheap, and lazy, and how to not be afraid, cheap, and lazy. Yeah, I remember you telling my audience that last year. I did. I held my breath for a minute. It was like, (laughs) but we get it. We get it. We know. We know. I get lazy. Yeah. I get lazy. I 
I get cheap. <laughs> That's right. So and listen, yeah. your your event uh, really I mean, really you and I have the same message, right? Mm-hmm. It's about just don't let the fear stop you. Don't be that afraid entrepreneur who doesn't make do their listings, who doesn't do their social media, who doesn't develop their own website, right? Don't be cheap. I think you did a whole day last year at your event about pricing products. Oh yeah. I was so impressed. Right. And that's a big problem. I I think for your audience is that they're not pricing right. And then, yeah, lazy is all about doing what you should be doing, not the fun things, but doing what you should be doing in your business. So, yeah, because I'm telling you, if you're sending me candy crush requests, I know you are not working. (laughs) You're busted. (laughs) (laughs) And I get a lot of those. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, it's true. It's because it's easier to find the things to do that we like to do that feel productive. You know, it feels productive when you guys are out there sourcing and you're in the thrift shop and you're finding stuff and in your head you're going, "Ooh, I can turn this into 20 bucks. But then it goes home and it goes and it sits in a pile of unlisted stuff. And then pretty soon you can't have your grandkids come stay the night because you don't have a bed to put them in. Pretty soon you can't eat dinner at your table because you don't have a table to set for dinner. Yeah, so they know what I'm talking about. So Too well, I'm afraid. Yeah. So. Yeah. And service based business people do the same things. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I tell you, you know, I mean, I've worked with lots of different industries and I've been in business my entire life. We all do it. There are points in times when we all do it. And it's really easy to get distracted and do the fun things and you know, it might be doing the shopping and say, that sounds like fun to me too. Right? Shopping's fun. But yeah, if we don't do the rest of it, we don't make the money. And remember, cash flow is a byproduct of sales and sales is a byproduct of conversion. So yeah, we got to have the money. So we got to do that, do the parts that make the money. Yep. That's absolutely true. And, and, you know, I actually coach uh, some of the people who teach other people to sell on eBay too. And they fall into those same things, you know, is it's kind of wanting things to run on their, their own. They want the easy button. I mean, that was the most yeah. brilliant marketing staples ever, you know, the easy button, because we all want an easy button. That's right. We want to know in your audience that goes yeah. back to niche and messaging, right? Yeah. Yes. It's a yeah. full circle. <laughs> so tell me if you agree with this, that one of the, biggest things out there is, and I don't care if it's, you know, product-based, service-based, whatever the business is, is focus, focusing. Absolutely. That's the whole, um, you know, today I'm doing this, tomorrow I'm doing that. Right. And, and, and you know what, not even today and tomorrow, it might be to right at this moment, I'm doing this and then two minutes later, I'm don't even remember I was doing it. So yeah, it's a big issue. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, how do you solve that issue? <laughs> uh, well, so as uh, someone who's a little on the ADD side herself, and, and I have to say, guys, I think that, um, you know, focus is a bonus sometimes, but focus is is kind of out there and it's got to be, you've got to be in a little control of it, like Danny would love to think she is. <laughs> and um, so what I do personally, what I do when I have to focus on something and I have to get it done, I actually have a timer. I'm going to show you my timer. It sits right here on my desk. I use it. I set it for 20 minutes or 24 minutes or whatever. And I'm like, I don't let myself do anything else but that task for that amount of time. So I will tell you, if I was an eBay seller and, you know, every time I come to that event, and this is what's funny, I'm, I'm not getting sidetracked here. But last year when I went to your event, Danny, my husband said, do not come home with another business. <laughs> so <laughs> I have a feeling I'm getting ready to get that warning since I get on the plane on Tuesday. But, um, you know, if I was if, if I was a seller on eBay and the most important thing I could do, obviously, we got a couple things that are really important. Know your people, know your niche, know what they're looking for, know how to buy things at the right price and then sell them. I would yes. be setting that timer and sitting here doing listings, right? Yep. That's exactly what I'd be very focused on doing that. So for me, that's what I have to do. That's the only way I can really stay. I stay focused there. And then I also have a team that helps me stay very focused. If I start to do my little squirrel thing, they're like, wait, I thought we were 
we were, I thought this was our project for right now. So yeah, yeah, we have a list of squirrel items, by the way. Squirrel. That's those things we want to get to that's not right now. I like that. The squirrel list. <laughs> <laughs> And then you go, oh, nuts. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I'm I'm guilty. I just, I, I can, every single day, I, what was I doing this morning? It was, I was looking up something for the show and then I ran across this something and, and all, before I knew it, I'm over in this completely different place going, wait a minute, I was supposed to be printing out something for the show, you know, but so we all yeah. do that. We all do we that. We do. And so here's what's real important. And this is the insight. And that is that your ideal client is doing it as well. Oh, okay? absolutely. So you got to get really good. You've got seconds for them to see your item and then either buy or move on and get distracted. Right. I mean, I was on eBay yes. earlier today and I noticed the list on the bottom and said, you might also like. Well, that's distraction. Boom. Okay. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> so, so you guys got to get, you got to get real clear that they have a focus problem as well. Yeah. And so how do you fix their focus problem? You lay things out on the way they're looking for them. You know what they're looking for. You have great imagery. You have perfect words, right? Right. I don't know, Danny, you can weigh in on that. I'm getting oh, yeah. my soapbox here. Yeah, no, <laughs> we, we work a lot on, on titles. I mean, those titles need to be written for the human that's, typing in what they're looking for right. and also it's got to hit them that's got to be the item that out of that whole page of results that they get back they see yours and it's like that one and mm -hmm. you you don't even have seconds what you I think you have like half a second in today's world to as they're scrolling down that list and you better hope you're coming up on page one of those yeah. results which I mean that all comes down to being relevant that's the the buzz search keyword now is relevance yeah, yeah. and and be relevant to that customer which is that focus which goes back to that niche that you guys hear me harp on all the time because then you are going to be picked up on that customer's radar and maybe they come into your store on that one item and that isn't quite what they want but then they see the other stuff you have for sale and they're your customer they find something they don't leave without buying something so yeah that's great Yep. I, I, I got to tell you, you know, even in sourcing, I used to be an everything sourcer. I used to go out there and whatever, whether it was clothes or shoes or, you know, knickknacks or whatever, I would just load up and I, I don't have time. I don't have time. My niche now for my eBay store is hundred dollar plus items and I don't do any clothes or shoes. I did too much time for me, for me. Those are good niches, if that's yeah. your thing, but not for me. And it's the price point for me uh, in that it's I've got to be able to sell it for over $100 or it's just not worth my time. But the fun thing is I have another venue to put those things that aren't quite up to that caliber but I don't all I have to do is buy it and slap a price tag on it and it goes down to my brick and mortar booth so I'm still having fun with that but it's still very focused it is yeah. things that people in the local community are going to want to buy and so I still have to know who that customer is yeah yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I love that, you know, it's it, one of the things that you teach is all about the niche and, and the ways to define it. And it's not always just um, a particular item, right? It could no. be price. It could be regional. It could, there's, there are lots of ways to define your niche. Can you, uh, can you grab your, your book back there? Give us a closer. I grab the one. I oh, she has it. She says she's so good. <laughs> Am I a good radio sh uh, show host or, or show guest or what? Yeah, what you want to know, honey. So tell us what what is the most important chapter in that book? Oh, let's see here. I would say that the most important chapter is um, entrepreneurs are cheap. Yeah. yeah, there you go. That's it. Entrepreneurs are cheap. Give, it, give, <laughs> it, give us some details about that. The details about that are that uh, people don't charge what they're worth. And, right? they, don't and they don't charge, charge what their, their products, products are worth. Yes. That's right. <laughs> Exactly yeah. right. And yeah. when we can fix that for people, Danny, we change their life. Oh, absolutely. Right? I love I mean, it. I love yeah. seeing the scores. I love seeing, you know, the, the people that take my advice and they raise the price and stuff. And, you know, especially my appsters, they come to me. Well, what do you think I should price this at? 
And some of them go into it kind of kicking and screaming, thinking there's no way. And then the next thing I know, they're going, oh, my gosh, it's sold, you know, (laughs) and they got a hundred dollars profit instead of that twenty dollars profit they were going to go for. Yeah, I was really impressed with that at last year's event because there there were several of your clients there who were at the mic talking about how they had gotten finally gotten the confidence to price things better and they were making more money. So, I mean, it's just it really is. We get in our own heads and and it's really a nasty place to be, right? There are there are ways to price thing and things and facts to look at and and the fact that do you want to, you know, do you want to be the Walmart or do you yeah. want to set a standard? Yeah. And no I don't Walmart. know about you guys, but I'm not the, you know, I'm not doing the the dollar stuff or the penny stuff and no. maybe that's a good niche out there for some people, but for me, I'm going to set a standard. Yeah. yeah. Well, we actually have this year because people need to hear it from more than than me. We actually are bringing in a multi multi millionaire who's a big eBay buyer, and awesome. oh yeah, and my audience gets to ask him anything. He's open, game on. I'm excited. How does a millionaire <laughs> shop on eBay? You know, so it's That's not right. not just coming from me. So, cool. um, Michelle, thank you so much for coming on today. Oh, this thanks for having me. I can't wait to give you a big old hug on Tuesday. Yeah. In Vegas. It's coming up. Yay. <laughs> yeah. And for those who are going to be at the event, uh, you will get to meet Michelle live. She'll have copies of her book. I'm excited to get mine. And uh, we'll have you on again sometime, maybe live in the studio next time. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. You know me, I'm on a plane in two seconds. There so. we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> have bag wheel travel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Michelle, thank you so much. We will see All you right. next week. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right.